Joining me for reaction, Senate Budget Committee member Kevin Kramer. Um, great to have you with us, uh, sir, to get your reaction to this. The New York Post cover today, dark divide. Biden says Trump supporters are, quote, a threat to democracy. He said it over and over there, uh, attacking Republicans in general and using this term MAGA Republicans. Your reaction to last night's address? Well, first of all, Jackie, thanks for having me. And my, my reaction as I saw it play out was, I suspect that this is a little more of a comfort zone for Joe Biden being angry and, and loud and obnoxious, uh, but it was very unpresidential to say the least and, and disappointing in many respects. You've already pointed to the fact that he was gonna be the great unifier. And of course he abandoned that, not just on uh, not just on Thursday night, but he abandoned that the day after he was inaugurated. But um, I, I just thought this, this what I call very unhealthy obsession with his predecessor is a sign of great insecurity and frankly some desperation. I don't know why why the you know the leader of the free world, the commander in chief, the president of the United States would allow his predecessor to spend so much time inside his head. Uh, I don't see how that elevates his agenda at all. So it was to me I think it was it was a peculiar speech, but it was a campaign speech disguised as a as a, some sort of a military exercise. Well, and that's a great point because members of the media have pointed out how the uh, stage was set up, the flanking of the Marines being used as a prop, the dramatic lighting, that sort of red tone to give it this, this dark and very contrasted um, kind of look. Many people say it was inappropriate to use the military as a prop when this was clearly a political speech and not a real address to the nation. Yeah, I'm surprised that his handlers didn't recognize that, but maybe this was what they were aiming for. If they're as desperate as I think they probably are, they probably felt like they needed to do something really big. But it looked more like the opening to a, a back, Batman movie than mm. it did a, a presidential address. And uh, so it was disappointing in that sense. I also think, by the way, I think it... I don't think it elevates him at all, but I actually think it reduces his stature with the American public. When he has now taken um, the military, used them as a political backdrop, things that they've accused Donald Trump of doing, the hypocrisy of, of, of this unifier versus great divider, which he has clearly become. But I think what it is, really, Jackie, I think it's a recognition that they're, they're in a position where they have to throw um, Hail Marys in, in hopes of, of surviving this next midterm election in a couple of months. And you know, they're trying whatever they can. And I also think he's just a little more comfortable with this this sort of a, a message than he is with some sort of more substantive policy message. Well, yeah, a lot of people say there was no real policy to talk about um, and that that would have taken him down a road that would have been very difficult for him to explain to the American people. Um, and so he went in a different direction with this speech. Um, some of your colleagues tweeting as well and, and giving some feedback on this. Senator Lindsey Graham uh, tweeting this, if we can put it up on the screen for our viewers. With all due respect, Mr. President, there's nothing wrong with America's soul. The American people are hurting because of your policies. Your thoughts? Well, and Lin yeah, no, Lindsay's exactly right. And I think this is part of the strategy was to distract away from the policies and the hurt of the American people and to somehow deflect the blame to his predecessor of all things and mega Republicans. When, when here's this president who has the incredible luxury of having his party in a majority in the House and in the Senate. And as a result of that uh, all-encompassing power. They flooded this economy with over now two and a half to three trillion dollars of free money into an economy that was already supercharged in, in an economy where where demand was already higher than supply and, and they increased the demand and, and we're still struggling through all of that. Yeah. Even with this week's job numbers, which you know still remain to be completely analyzed, but it's, it's all looking awfully flat and the productivity, that's what I get more concerned about than anything, is the productivity of the country has done down, and we're in a recession while facing this inflationary time. These are things he doesn't want us to be thinking about, much less, you know, our crime, crime ridden streets and, and the influx the border, of illegal all, immigrants. All of it. Yeah, yeah all of it. Um, but it's, you know, the economy, uh, of course, is, is very important to most people across the country. These are the conversations that are had sure at is. the kitchen table. Where's inflation? How much am I paying for groceries? How much does it cost me and my family to fill up the gas tank, to uh, travel to and from work, to school, on vacations, et cetera? I mean, the American 
American people see through this to a certain extent, and yet the president stands up there at that podium and attacks half of the country's voters ahead of the mm -hmm. midterm elections, clearly not remembering that last time around in 2020, it was a very close election, sir. And we have spent, right. as a country, this administration has spent four trillion dollars more than four trillion dollars over the course of the last 19 months and we just got hit with the uh, so-called inflation reduction act another 739 billions and the forgiveness of student loans that spending not baked into the inflation cake just yet no that's exactly right jackie but i i do believe that the student loan forgiveness thing will get baked in fairly quickly because you have college presidents and provosts and and chancellors all around the country watching that going Doggone it, I can raise tuition even more. This guy's making it really easy, giving free money to people. And and I, I just think, I don't think it's that they forgot. I don't think that he he forgot it. I just think that they're hoping they can somehow change the narrative mm -hmm. while they can't change what's going on in people's lives. Because you cannot convince the American people with all the marketing and backdrops and movie sets in the world that they're that they're not hurting. They know they're hurting every time they fill their, their gas tank or buy groceries or, or try to try to buy a home for crying out loud. I mean, I, we're yet to see, I think, the worst of of, uh, of the inflation. Oh, sure. Jerome Powell indicated rates are going higher. The pain is yet to come. Senator Kevin Kramer, great to see you. Thank you so much for your time. Always my pleasure, Jackie. Thank you.